Hello friends, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be making this incredibly fun mini whack-a-mole game. Whack-a-mole is a mostly mechanical game, so the first thing I had to figure out was how to get the moles to pop up and down. This is a very fast and frequently occurring linear motion, and the only thing I could think of that can move linearly that fast and is also particularly suited for working is an electromagnet. More specifically, a solenoid. A solenoid is a type of electromagnet that has a short ion core fixed to one side of its coil and a plunger that's attracted to the core when current is applied to the coil. This plunger movement can be used to pull the moles up and when the current is removed, the plunger is released and gravity pulls the moles back down. Solenoids are really easy to make too. All you need is some roll of insulated copper wire and a steel rod you can cut into different lengths. The only part that might be a little tricky to make is the body. This is usually made with high temperature plastic or metal to avoid deformation from the heat generated when current flows through the coil. But for this application, we can get away with using PLA since current will only be flowing through the coil for a few seconds at a time. To make the solenoids, I rigged up this little winding mechanism. I wasn't about to wind 6,000 tons by hand. The rig has two motors. The first winds the copper wire in one direction and the second moves the guide back and forth to even out the windings. There is an adjustable limit switch on each side of the guide that lets me match its movement to the length of the solenoid I'm trying to make. There is also another limit switch at the back of the winding motor that lets me keep track of the number of tons. All this is controlled by an Arduino and the Hell 293D motor driver IC. The high C lets me power the motors with voltages higher than 5 volts. It also lets me control the speed and the direction the motors spin with PWM signals from the Arduino. The Hell CD is also connected to the Arduino to display the tons count, so making the coil is just a matter of printing out the body, gluing the necessary pieces together. Attaching it to the rig, loading the copper wire, and entering the number of tons I want in the code, which is 1500 tons on the 26 gauge copper wire for this project. I also need a way to detect when a mole gets it. For that, I decided to put limit switches under the helmet of each mole. So when a mole gets whacked, the switch is pressed and the code detects it. The rest of the mechanism will be 3D printed and then mounted onto a 14mm thick plywood. Usually for repetitive parts like this, I like to print out one set first and then assemble that to make sure all the parts work together as intended.
seems to work fine. I did have to hop the voltage from 12 to 24 volts to give the solenoid more power. Once I was satisfied with the operation, I proceeded to populate the rest of the holes. I also connected all the solenoids and the limit switches to a female header so I can have the mechanical part of the game be a self-enclosed unit. The helmet snapped onto the hinge on the moves and I also used a little hot glue to keep them from bouncing around. The game will primarily be controlled with an Arduino. I have a health CD connected as a visual interface. The two modules at the top are H-Bridge modules, also known as motor driver modules. They will be controlled with PWM signals from the Arduino and in turn they will turn on and off the solenoids. Each module controls two solenoids. The same thing can be achieved using MOSFETs. The only difference is each bridge ICs have the advantage of being able to invert their output polarities. Here is a more comprehensive circuit diagram. You will also find a link to it in the video description. Normally, I'll design some sort of enclosure for the circuit, but these parts are intended for another project, so I won't be doing that in this video. The code for controlling the game is pretty short and easy to understand, but let me quickly go through the main functions of the loop. So the first thing I do is generate a random number from 0 to 3. This number will be used to activate the moves at random. The next line is an if statement that checks to make sure the same number is not used consecutively. This section of the code sets the maximum time allowed to work a move depending on the level you are currently playing at. There are 4 levels in total and each one is a 25% increase in speed from the previous level. At the end of the last level, there is a bunch of if statements that checks how many moves was worked and then outputs the appropriate message to the LCD. This is where the game actually starts. First, it sends out a PWM signal to turn on the solenoid matched to the generated random number and then enters this for loop that runs for an amount of time predetermined by the level, essentially allowing you a limited time frame to work the move. During this time, the code continuously checks if the limit switch matched to the active mode gets pressed. If it does, the work detection variable gets set and the mode is immediately deactivated. Deactivating the mode after detection helps to achieve this. Instead of this. The next section of the code checks if the work detection variable was set during the time frame and then increments the score. After that, the code updates the information on the LCD and the cycle starts again. The only thing left now is a hammer to whack the moves with. So there you have it guys, it's a really fun game and it's not too difficult to make. You'll find a link to the STL files, wood dimensions, parts and circuit diagram in the description. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and also consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.